Yeah. I'm in bushland near my garden on the New South Wales Central Coast. And at the moment, the iconic Gaimea lily is coming into flower as part of my local flora. It's a natural for me to plant in my garden because it's going to bring all the local bird life right in where I can enjoy it. Not every part of Australia has such brilliant and spectacular local native plants, but it's really important to use the flora that you've got in your area because that's what the local bird life is adapted to and it will grow well in your conditions. So get along to your local council or community nursery and find out what local native species they have because they're the perfect plants to put in your garden. Chimea lilies make a stunning focal point in the garden. The nectar rich flowers are a magnet for a wide variety of birds including honey eaters. And that nectar also attracts all sorts of insects. Small ones like native bees can often be found foraging in the nectar rich flowers and that in turn attracts insectivorous birds. Now as stunning as these flowers are, they don't provide a lot of protection for smaller birds. So if you're going to plant a gyamere lily, make sure that you have some small dense shrubs underneath. Things like the spiky leafed acacias for instance. The botanical name for gyamere lily is Dorianthes excelsa. Dorianthes literally means spear flower in Greek and excelsa is Latin for exceptional. The natural distribution of this plant is within a hundred kilometres radius of Sydney. But it also grows well when planted in coastal areas of Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia and Western Australia. These are very tough plants that will survive harsh conditions and will grow in positions from full sun through to relatively deep shade. However, the less light they receive, the less likely it is for them to flower. Frost is a problem for the emerging flower stems. However, flowering plants in the Australian National Botanic Gardens in Canberra attest to the fact that it is possible to grow them to flower in colder climates. Once you've planted it in your garden, it can take several years to flower. So it's a good thing that this really bold foliage makes its own statement in the garden all year round with its beautiful vertical lines. It's a drought tolerant plant because the shoots actually pull themselves down into the soil and bury themselves up to 30 centimetres below soil level. Now, you need to water them to get them established for the first couple of months, but after that they'll rarely if ever need watering. As far as maintenance goes, they really are trouble-free plants. All you need to do is remove the old flower stems once they brown off. And also just take off any old foliage that's turned brown as well. Because their roots are so deep, they get right down into the subsoil and they can get all the nutrients they need. So there really is no need to fertilise them either. While bushfires are the surefire trigger for flowering in the wild, this is usually not a feasible option in the suburban backyard. However, lodging a stone about the size of a 50 cent piece in the crown of a large chute has triggered flowering the following season in my experience. It's possible that the stone causes the plant to produce a natural growth regulator called ethylene that is also present in the smoke from bushfires. This substance is also used to initiate flowering in pineapples and other members of the bromeliad family, so it's quite likely to be the trigger for flowering in gymere lily. The incredible diversity of the Australian bush is one of its greatest features. The almost endless array of plant species supports a wonderful diversity of birds and other animals. If you want to bring those birds and animals into your own garden, you need to grow some of the plants from your local bush. If you're in Sydney, for instance, the choice is simple. Things like the Gymere lily and the Waratah are a bit of a no-brainer. But there are 
all sorts of plants out there in the bush from these big spectacular ones to these little spiky ones like this prickly Moses acacia. So plant a great diversity in your garden and you'll be richly rewarded.